Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The first step in the preparation of the anterior three-quarter crown is to mark the labial extent of the finish line. This is done with the type of dent tooth in place. The tooth is removed and a second line is placed one millimeter lingual to the first line. A long thin tapered diamond is used to prepare the distal slice. This is done in a series of short steps starting at the lingual and moving out toward the distal labial. The slice is carried all the way through the uh, contact area and out onto the distal labial surface. Using a flame-shaped diamond, the mesial slice is placed on the tooth and the lingual finish line is also placed. Here we see the mesial slice and the lingual chamfer finish line. Reestablish the line of draw with the pin ledge preparation using a 170L carbide burr and the guide pin in the pin uh, hole of the pin ledge. Mark the mesial uh, position of the mesial groove and the distal groove. With a pencil, reinforce these uh, markings so that you know where, the, uh, where to place the carbide burr for cutting the grooves. Prepare the mesial groove to coincide with the pencil line. It should just be inside the mesial labial finish line and extend just below the cervical finish line of the slice. It should be about one millimeter in depth into the tooth. Prepare the distal groove parallel to the mesial groove in the same manner. The distal groove should be contained within, totally within the slice. Using the same 170L carbide burr, prepare the cingulum recess about one millimeter in size to the cervical finish line. Plan the incisal groove so that it connects the mesial and distal grooves and follows the incisal contour of the tooth. This groove is prepared using a inverted cone diamond. The groove itself should be about one millimeter wide. Care must be exercised so as not to thin the labial plate of enamel excessively or undercut the labial plate when preparing the groove. If this is done, the labial plate will be weakened. Uh, it will be impossible to draw the tooth, uh, the pattern off the tooth, and the aesthetics will be poor due to the gold showing through the thin labial pl plate. Next, reduce the lingual surface uh, uniformly using this bullet-shaped diamond. The lingual surface is reduced until when the typodont or the uh, patient is closed into centric occlusion position onto two thicknesses of 28 gauge green wax, there is no penetration of the cusp tips through the wax. One can readily see that there is no penetration here. Using a tapered diamond, prepare a 45 degree inner incisal bevel on the incisal edge of the tooth. For maximum aesthetics, only an inner bevel is placed on the mesial portion of the tooth. The uh, inner bevel is also placed on the distal, distal portion of the tooth. Using this same diamond after the bevel has been placed, take and remove the small triangle of enamel below the slice. This is done both on the mesial portion of the tooth and the distal portion of the tooth. At the same time, a bevel is placed below the mesial groove and the distal groove. This is done using the same flame-shaped or tapered diamond instrument. An outer incisal bevel is placed on the distal portion of this tooth. The bevel is brought just to the height of the cusp tip. The incisal edge and the mesial and distal grooves of the preparation are now sharpened up and smoothed up with a 170L carbide burr. The mesial and distal grooves at this point are the depth, in depth are the diameter of the burr. Using a fine flame-shaped finishing diamond, 
the lingual surface finish lines are smooth and polished up, as is the distal slice and the distal finish line. Next, the distal incisal inner bevel is finished, and the mesial incisal inner bevel is finished. Finally, the mesial aspect of the mesial groove, or the labial aspect of the mesial groove, is finished. And last, the distal uh, bevel, the outer bevel on the distal portion of the labial surface is finished. Then, using a Moore's mandrel and a fine sand disc, the sharp angles of the tooth are, are smooth, as is the distal slice of the preparation. The lingual surface is also smooth. Using a half round burr mounted in the air rotor, drill an index hole in the cingulum recess for the pinhole. This hole does not have to be deep. It just allows us a uh, purchase for using a twist drill, for the twist drill will slip off of hard enamel or hard dentin. Using the guide pin technique now, align a 3-0 twist drill with the guide pin and the other pinholes making sure that they are parallel. And finally, maintaining that parallelism, drill the pinhole for the cingulum of the three-quarter crown preparation. This pinhole is drilled parallel both to the guide pin and to the other two pinholes in the unilateral central pin ledge preparation. Here we are checking the parallelism of the pinholes using the twist drill. Be careful not to stop the twist drill when it is in the pinholes or it will break off. Using a periodontal probe, we can see that the lingual pinhole is about two and a half millimeters deep and we have parallelism between the grooves and the pinholes. The important mesial labial and mesial incisal finish lines have been penciled in. When the typodont tooth or pin facing is placed back into position, it can be seen that little or no gold will be displayed in the final restoration. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.